You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And I am Evan Klosky. And we are the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays. You can also find us on the social medias, X and Instagram, and email us anytime. Voice memos preferred, LockedOnRays at gmail.com. It has been a minute since we've had Mr. Klosky on the program. In fact, we have not even discussed the Rays' early, disappointing, disgusting exit from the wild card series against the Rangers. Heck, now the Rangers are in the World Series, believe it or not. So it's a good time to catch up with uh, Evan and, and kind of look back and harken back to the series that was. But first, um, Evan, I want to get your take on how the MLB playoffs have, unfold, have unfolded in your eyes Uh Right as we're recording, you have the Phillies and the Diamondbacks in Game 7, and then, of course, the Rangers advancing to the World Series. But your take on the 2023 edition of the Fall Classic thus far? Yeah, uh, you can see hockey behind me. And I'm starting to realize that Major League Baseball and its playoffs resemble hockey in a lot of regards. And in in the hockey world, it doesn't matter what you do in the regular season. you got to get a ticket to the dance. Doesn't matter if you just get in or you blow the competition away. Because as Nick Castellano said, um, I think when closing out the series against Atlanta, he even said, I'm starting to learn that October is just way different than any other part of the year. And it's handled differently. It's a totally different skill set. And a lot of it's random. You got to show up at the right time. But um, I, I think, A, just get in and all bets are off. B, you have to have dogs. You got to have dudes who, um, who just do not wilt in the big moment. People who, uh, you know, the, the Rays have a Randy Rosarena on that team. He, he's, a, he's a big game guy. I don't know how many guys, and I'm just being completely objective, I don't know how many guys are built for that moment. Now, having said that, I don't think Mike Brasso is a guy who you would say is is built for those moments, and, and he has one of the biggest in, in Rays history. But having said that, it's just you need you need people who are going to, to elevate their game to another level, and it's tough to really predict who does that. Um, you know, on paper, you can ask for everything that the, the Braves were with a lineup. Uh, you can ask for having Tyler Glass now and Zach Eflin as your one, two in a wild card series at home where, uh, especially Eflin dominated all season long. You can put it all on a piece of paper and it can look shiny and nice, but in the end, the players got to perform and October is small sample size baseball where anything goes. You know, you you said October is different than regular season, and I think we all agree on that. Was it surprising to you seeing no urgency from Kevin Cash in the wildcard series? I don't know if... I, I don't put this on Kevin Cash. First off, the Rangers, my lord... Um, Outside of a, of a few games at home against the Astros, who, uh, you know, they have the pedigree. They, year in and year out, I think, have the expectation that they're going to be there. They remind me of, of the Tampa Bay Lightning in that, in that, uh, in that regard, sounds the, uh, the controversy in 2019. But um, this wasn't on cash. You know, like, we can all debate um, – the, the, the World Series in 2020 and pulling Blake Snell out, you know, those those are kind of cash decisions that we can all have a healthy debate about. The, the players stunk. They just stunk. Like, uh, Tyler Glass now um, blew up in the middle of that game. And I, I say blew up in, in italics. I mean, it was a 4 nothing event. But uh, they, they couldn't touch 
Jordan Montgomery, a lefty at home. You know who had the best record against lefties at home? The Rays. You know who dominated lefties all season long? The Rays. You, like it, the, that lineup and that that matchup could not have been any better on paper. And then it came down to like, you know, it didn't matter anyway. I mean, Evan Carter was came out of nowhere and just eviscerated them. The bottom of the lineup eviscerated them in back-to-back games. But um, when you score zero, who gives a crap? And then the next game, it you know, we entered the playoffs saying Nathan Eovaldi stinks ever since coming off injury. And whatever adjustment he made, he went right back to the Cy Young candidate he was for half the season before the injury. And he's shown that game in and game out throughout this postseason that whatever he was in September was certainly not the person he was going to be in October. And so he was lights out. And Zach Eflin, again, a guy who dominated inside Tropicana Field, most wins ever from a Rays pitcher at home during the season, stunk it up. And and the hitters were a no-show. I mean, it, it you know, Kevin Cash joked he was just thankful that they got one freaking run across the board, thanks to Curtis Mead, so that next postseason, when they get there, you know, if they get there, we don't have to talk about that. But still, it's ineptitude at the biggest moments. And uh, and and it's, it's becoming increasingly obvious that uh, the, the lineup struggles against elevated pitching in 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 uh, in the playoffs. You're facing the best of the best, and the margin for error is extremely thin. Now, game one, they committed errors. They didn't pitch and they didn't hit. Like, where in that is Kevin Cash a problem? Like, they just stunk. They just stunk. So um, last year, I was on record of, of being very critical of Kevin Cash, not trying to bunt do anything to generate offense for this team when they were proving all season long they were never going to get it going. And then in the playoffs when they played a, a 2-1 game, a 1-0 game where the the you have to try to make things happen, they did nothing. Um, even in the playoffs, right? Jose Siri, who I think played, um, tried to gut through that thumb injury. He tried to bunt with them. He's try, he tried to generate offense. Um, where fans usually yell, bond, oh, please bond, please do it. Like, and, and, uh, and, and Siri screwed it up. And that's what I've said throughout the years. Like people want to bunt in a lot of scenarios. You have to execute the bunt. And they spent the previous two, three weeks having bunting competitions. They were prepared to do it in the playoffs. They said, screw it. We didn't do it most of the year. We're going to do it in the playoffs. And when push came to shove and it was time to show up, they didn't show up. So, um, well, I'm, they, also I'm, I'm, guy, they also asked a guy. They also asked a guy to bunt that had only done it once in all of his MLB career. Correct, but he's been he was doing it in practice. That is my point. And they were. Pra- Allen I mean, Iverson. Allen Iverson would have a few choice words with the word practice. If you don't, if you don't give a crap about practice, then the fact <laughs> of the matter is, like, you don't play the games, right? Like, in the end, like that's what spring training's for. That's what all these things are for. You have to execute. The point of practice is to perform in the game. The Buccaneers say week after week, we practice great for three days, and then they stink it up offensively. You know, I don't know what to tell you. I don't give a crap yeah. about Monday through through Saturday. I care about Sunday. And, 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 yes, at a certain point, I don't care about the three weeks of bunting competitions. I care about in the game, are you going to do it? And the fact of the matter, they didn't do it. Is that, a, is that a problem with the decision-making, or is that a problem on the player executing? I just think sometimes we, de- we default to, oh, blame cash. And I, I think we don't rationalize where to blame him. And um, I think I think 2020, there's a valid argument. I think in 2021, there is a uh, – sorry, in, in uh, I guess – yeah, 2020, valid argument. In the 2022 play – why am I getting something screwed up here? It's, or is, am I thinking because of the pandemic, things screwed up? Whatever. The 2020 World was Series. the Blake Snell fiasco. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then uh, pretty much every postseason after that, the Rays have been. Oh, early I'm exits. skipping. I'm skipping the Red Sox here. Um, yeah. Yeah. So one. that that's. I knew I was missing one. Um, Talk about bringing yeah. up bad memories. Man, yeah, I think the I think the, the the Red Sox series. I, I blame Kevin Cash for bringing Shane McClanahan in as a reliever when he had not done that all year. A kid a kid who is really like playing his first full year on the team and put him in a terrible position. And that's where we get the infamous uh, garbage throw gif yeah. from McClanahan. 
So I think that's that's uh, fair. And and last uh, in 2022, I think it's fair in Cleveland. I just I, this year was not cash. This playoffs were not cash. It was the players stunk. They stunk. They were terrible. There is a lot of uncertainty in the world today, and it's important to be prepared. And that's why the Jace case is a must have. The Jace case is a personalized emergency medication kit that contains five essential antibiotics that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. You can also customize your Jace case with dozens of add-on medications. You can choose the medications that best fit you and your family's unique needs. And now you can even buy gift cards for your family or loved ones with the holidays coming up so that they can get a Jace case of their own. So today, go to jacemedical.com and enter code Locked on L O C K E D O N at checkout for $20 for a discount on your order. Again, that's promo code locked on L O C K E D O N at Jace. That's J A S E medical.com. Hey, the Rays have made progress. They're scoring one run in 18 innings versus one run in 24 innings. And to your point about Jose Siri, I guess a guy that had a bummed up uh, hand, wrist, whatever it was, that'd probably be the guy to bunt rather than have him go full bore on a swing, right? I um, They got injured at the wrong time at the end of the year. I think they were kind of stuck. I think they – and we talked about this in the draft episode. Um, if, if Siri can field, then I think it might be worth it to go up there and bunt. I think I even said that. I think, you yeah. know, just go bunt up there every time and just whatever. Who cares? You're just you're out there to field. But after game one, where it was very clear that his fielding wasn't up to snuff, he made two errors. He hit threw away a ball. And then I don't know if that second one was an error, but a catch he should have made. I mean, it was a hard catch. But if you're going to play in that game, if you're going to be Jose Siri, you're going to be that guy. You make that catch. And um, he didn't. So I think, you know, they said it was planned in game two. He, he wasn't going to play that one anyway. It was Ivaldi who was a righty, um, you know. I'll, I'll take him at his word, but um, it just – it was very clear that Siri was rusty because it was his first game back. And if you remember back in April when he had like the, the hamstring issue and he came back, he, he stunk for like three weeks before he finally got it going again. So I thought they pressed in that decision, but I get it because Mark Go was terrible. And game two, it was like – I don't think it cost him that inning. I think Eflin got out of it, but he – completely misplayed a ball. I think it was a Corey Seager double and Eflin got out of it in the first inning. Margot stunk in center. It was like they had no center fielder. So um, that was the moment where the Rays were like, yeah, we're not bringing him back. for That's look, I mean, here, here's my thing. It just, um, all the numbers, I kind of looked it up after the season. I didn't really find a deficiency really um, that, that, that proves this because of how they were, in April and May and a little bit of June, it was so amazing that the end of the year numbers really kind of, and, and not to mention they did kind of figure themselves out there towards August, September uh, before kind of backups were coming in and they were piecing it together and still performing. But uh, they, they were, they were beaten up at the wrong time. Very unfortunate, but even so I've said it a million times, their lineup is, is way too, all or nothing, way to strike out heavy, and they they fail to play. Um, they fail to, I don't want to say small ball, but they fail to like have innings where they just like get a hit, get a hit, get a hit, get a hit, and they move it. It just there's too many rally killers in the lineup. Walls. They they love Walls. The internal numbers say that he is a gold glove caliber fielder. I'm you sorry. I'm sorry, Evan. I'm sorry. I have to disagree a hundred percent. I'm telling. I'm this. not telling. I'm not telling you what I feel. I'm telling you that the numbers that they have in that organization, whatever their their data points are, however they statistically do it, it says that Taylor Walls is an elite defender. So, it's the decision making that's that's horribly because when you are only scoring 
two runs in 42 innings of postseason game. You don't need gold glovers out there. You need bats. And so when you're telling me that you're starting Taylor Walsh against the righty when he has a 75 WRC plus in a whole season, that is bad decision making either by the front office or by Kevin. Who do you I think want? you need bats that are named Wander Franco they, or bats correct. that have uh, price tags of, you know, you $20 had Junior Kemmer, a, with Junior Kemmer, What I, do you think Evan Carter can have uh, the world, but Junior Camonero can't? Why do the Rangers can? Why can't the Rangers? Junior Camonero started in high A ball this year. It doesn't I love, matter. It does matter because here's the thing. First off, let me say this: Junior Camonero. Unbelievable. I hope he's on the team to start 2024. They had to put him on the 40 man anyway. He was rushed to come up here. I think they had to bring him up due to injuries and yes. due to the Wander Franco situation. Yes. I asked for Junior Caminero to come up. And mm-hmm. when we saw him, he was okay. He had a couple of hits. The exit velo was there when he made contact, but he wasn't really ready to be an impact player. Well, October baseball is back, and you can make your postseason debut with FanDuel. They are America's number one sports book. You should know that by now. Join FanDuel today, and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, to create that new account of yours. Then you can get in on the action from the first pitch until the last out. Bet on everything from strikeouts to homers to who will win the dang ball game. And if you don't want to wait the entire game to get a W, well, you can predict what will happen in the next at bat with a neat feature called quick bets. So head on over to FanDuel.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N right now. Step up to the plate this postseason with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Now, you would say I'd still prefer him over Taylor Walls. I am telling you, his defense is a liability at shortstop. I'm telling you, it is. (laughs) Over a long season, 100% agree. This isn't a long season. This is a short season. Exactly. It's one game. One game. They and one ever could bury you in the postseason. But but Walls, even you put Walls in there, and he still made an error. So again, like we we are focusing on oh the I I that's why I have to disagree with the fact that there's no blame to go in Kevin Cash. Now, are you right that the players stunk it up and that most of the fault is on them? A hundred percent. But was Caminero going to change? Was Caminero going to change the out the outlook of this postseason? We don't know. Yes or no? Yes or no? Know. We do no, know. it was not. No, he it was not going to hit. A, he was not going to hit a five-run homer. He was not going to do it. He was not going to hit. Uh, he was not going to save him from a seven-one loss. No, Wait, the answer is so no. You're saying <laughs> when, no. So, so it's not only Caminero though, Evan. It's it's the fact that you had the best bullpen in the major leagues for the last six weeks and a half of the of uh, of the season, and you throw no Pete Fairbanks and no Robert Stevenson. Well, yes, I'm a little bit surprised it didn't pitch Stevenson just to get experience. But um, That's again, it Kevin didn't. Cash. It, it didn't matter. It brought up in they the, scored uh, one run. Conference. Ulysses, they scored it one doesn't run. It doesn't Kevin, matter. It doesn't yes, matter. It, it, no, it doesn't. It, no, it doesn't. Evan, were you, when were you going to pull out Taylor? When were you going to pull out Taylor Glass? Now, on September 20th, I tell you, hey, the Rays are losing 2-0. Men on first and second. It's a wild card game. Who do you bring out of the pen? I will amputate anything you want out of my body, and you will not have said Chris Devensky. <laughs> you would not he, have said Chris Devensky in that moment. But here's the thing. What did Devensky do wrong? Well, he let in the two runs that were already No, on, on he let in a run that Jose Siri let in the other one because of an error. And then he got out of the jam. Like but he, you're he talking did. About results. It's the game decision. Why but you are you have not bringing in a Robert Stevenson there? Why are you not because bringing in somebody else? I will explain to you why. Here is the issue. All right. You, you were 
you were already kind of up Shit's Creek in that game. Uh, you, you push glass now, which I think you have to go for everyone who would ever complain about the Blake Snell thing. You have to allow glass now to be, to be that guy. And, uh, and they allowed him to do it. He got into some big time trouble, battled all game. And it was the fifth inning, the sixth, inning, whatever it was, but it was, if you were going to start deploying your a guys, your a guys were then going to have to maybe pitch Wednesday and oh then Thursday God. in a game three. So you now have to, now you have to go. Okay, so now they're fresh to watch football in their couches. I'm so happy. My, but the thing is, is we, you're living in a world of hindsight. Uh, in my head, as Kevin Cash, I got Zach Eflin on the bump tomorrow, a guy who's pitched in the World Series, who's the best pitcher in, at home in Rays history for a season. And my hunch is he's going to go out there He's going to shove, and I'm going to deploy my A guys. And then game three, by the way, when we win in game two, Savali's going to pitch three innings, and I'm going to go heavy bullpen. It's going to be all bullpen because that was the route that they were going to go in game three. It was not going to be Savali's going to twirl seven. It was going to be exactly what they did in Toronto. We are going to have Savali go through the lineup once, and then we're going to go bullpen and get right to our strength. They never had that opportunity, and if they blew out their bullpen in game one, they would have had a weakened bullpen in game three, which means that you would have either, A, had to ride Savali out longer, which it was proving that he was struggling even the second time through the lineup. He wasn't great. He just didn't perform. The numbers you said he was fine. You can't lose. You can't plan to win tomorrow when you're playing one game already. I'm sorry, Evan. Like, we might just agree to disagree on this, but, like, you can't just, like – Especially in the playoffs, it's fifth July. 30th, but you're just hundred percent. But it's if, October. If it's an elimination scored, game. But it doesn't. Here's the thing: you have to account for three games back to back to back days. You do. And the thing is, if you would have thrown out Pete day one, Pete day two, Pete day three, and if Pete would have. Given up a three-run tater in the in the clinching game sure. to lose it, everyone would be saying, "Well, why did we pitch him game one when we knew that was going to be a loss anyway?" And the fact is, who but gives it wasn't a crap? A loss. They didn't hit. But they it wasn't didn't a hit. Loss. It wasn't a loss. At when you're two zero, they didn't score a run. That is a hundred percent correct. And we it didn't matter that. even after happened. that. They didn't score a run. The that bullpen held it down negate. after Davinsky. It just Evan, like after the error. Not, that does not negate the bad decisions that were made pitching wise. Yes, they did not hit a hundred percent. But why are you making wrong pitching decisions? I, I just don't problem. think that. And it's I not think... only that. It's not only that. But so you got a mini rally brewing. Yes, it's in the it's a, it's in the later part of the game, and you're really not pinch hitting many more go. Against Leclerc, who's a righty? Why? I mean, in in game one of the 2023 season, Kevin Cash did two pinch hitters in the sixth inning. Two pinch hitters. And you're telling me in an elimination game, just to try something, a Hail Mary, to get Jonathan Aranda a damn at bat, a lefty against Leclerc, and you stick with Manny Margot, who had well, the worst swing of the major leagues this season. Which I was hot at month leading up. I, I'm, I'm just saying, like, the, the end of, Kevin Cash Mark, made wrong decisions there. I don't – Not on him. See, no, it just – You're just – In the in the end, this is what you're doing. You're trying you, – you, You're carrying a narrative about Kevin Cash in the playoffs, and you're trying to validify it by these little – it's like uh, it's like complaining to your kid who got a 97 on a test what he did wrong to not get those other three points. I've it, experienced that, by the way. Yeah, and so you're 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 combing over. Uh, the only difference is you're. It, this isn't a 97, right? This is like a, a a three, and this is like there's so much wrong on it. So the fact is, the players did not perform. And there's a lot of hindsight that goes with it. Kevin mentioned Margot was probably your best hitter entering the postseason 
He was great ever since coming off an of injury. The fact is this team was beaten up. We all wanted Wander Franco there at shortstop if there weren't these allegations around there. The organization entered this season thinking Wander was their guy for life. For life. And Waldy was never going. I do disagree Walsy with the fact never, that Josh Walsy. Lowe, you didn't mention Josh Lowe as the best hitter coming into the postseason because yeah. he was better than Manny Margot. And then you don't start him in I, game one. Oh, because of a lefty. The dude was literally average against lefties. I, I think that I, I think that there probably was, in my opinion, a little bit too much foresight in the lefty lefty match, or too much um, not foresight, too much emphasis on the lefty lefty matchup with Josh Lowe and uh, facing a lefty. I agree with you there that that Josh Lowe probably needs to be in the lineup every day, and I don't give a crap who the who the pitcher is. I think he, he proved to you outside of a he hit a he hit a low there in the middle of the season, but I, I think Josh proved that for the most part you can sit him against certain guys, certain lefties to give him a breather. The Rays do that anyway. You you don't play every day unless you're Randy Rosarena. Certain guys, for the most part, you're going to sit once a week. So once a week you're going to play a lefty. You sit him in the playoffs. You ride with the best guys. I I agree with you there. Having said that, that is still not why they lost. Again, it's not. Evan, I want you to understand what I'm saying. They did not lose because of Kevin Cash. They did not lose because of Kevin Cash. They lost because the players stunk it up like they, had, they hadn't stunk it up since July. We all agree Correct. on that. All I'm saying is that Kevin Cash did mistakes, and I think that we should mention that so, because if not, then we're just twiddling our thumbs, putting rose colored glasses in a room full filled with fire saying, no, I like the heat. One thing I will note on the Margot Aranda would be substitution. Margot actually has a higher OPS against righties than he does lefties. And the difference between Aranda and Margot versus righties is extremely negligible. Okay. So, yeah. And not to mention Aranda, um, he had you know he had a good game there to kind of salvage. He had a couple of good games to salvage his playoff spot, but um, he didn't he didn't take advantage of his opportunities there at the end of the season. I, you know, I, I was the biggest Aranda guy, um, right? I, I mean, I, I I stood front and center for Aranda yeah, for a while, yeah. and um, look. You have opportunities. He had ample opportunity there for a while, and he just he didn't show up. Uh, and 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 that that's that's on him. And and the, the the problem is with the Rays is this again, and th this works under how they they kind of they're they're a good team under a large sample size. Under a small sample size, it's a little bit different, um, especially because it's very clear they can't get to October with a healthy pitching staff. And last year, or I should say 2022, uh, whatever, because uh, yeah. technically last year is now over, they finally did, and they were excellent, and they couldn't hit for beans. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, when we look back to 2020, why did they make it as far as they did? Dude, because they had a dog, like you said in the beginning of this episode. They had a dude that said, don't worry, boys, for the next – 20 playoff games, I got you. Correct. That's Randy Rose right now. And the, the fact is, is that they had a dude who stepped up and said, I got you, and performed like a superstar. Like a superstar. And, and still um, is living off of that performance. While Randy is a very damn good player, uh, he, he ain't what he did in 2020. Nobody. Uh, it, it's, Nobody is, <laughs> except, you know, maybe Babe Ruth. Uh, maybe maybe at the least Garcia in this playoffs, yeah. Seriously, another four homers, and he's, you know, yeah. this, it's something in the, uh, the, 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 the godfather and, yeah. and, uh, and Randy, that relationship, or just former St. Louis Cardinals uh, throwaway sure, prospects. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that, that's why they did it. It's that simple. And, uh, they, you know, I love – I love Josh. I love like Luke and, and, and Siri. I mean, Siri homered in, he's the only guy that got a run the previous year and Harold and Curtis and uh, you know, Yandi performed in game two. I'm glad that he stepped up because game one, he was a no show, but um, no, he, no, he was know, worse than a no show. I know he, he yeah, was negative. One, 
He was one, one was bad, and he was also battling some stuff, which seems to be a reoccurring issue. Two, he showed up. He hit the ball in two, but that – whatever. Um, the, the fact is there's two – they're too splotchy. They're like – these guys aren't feared hitters. They're good hitters. They're good hitters, and they all complement each other very well. But when it comes down to being that guy, being him – I don't know who him is because there. I'll say this: time after time, the Rays bring in um, a leader who is a pitcher and someone with you know experience who can lead that group, and they need to bring in a hitter who is going to be. I don't care if he hits two fifty. They need a hitter that's going to bring the fight out of everybody because they don't have a leader with a bat. And they Randy's said, they said Randy's that's what they did in Minnesota with Correa. Yeah, he didn't have Ready a great Freddie Freeman. Year. Where's he? Yeah. He's that Ran- guy. Randy and, and Randy is that guy by example. And and uh, you know, but he's not a rally the troops. He's not like a guy like bring them tight all together. He's right. a guy that's like watch me, follow me. I got this. And you know, so he's he's a lead by example type. They have tons – like, Yandi is – like, he's getting there. This year he took a big step as far – I think that contract certainly helped him at the plate. I think it helped him earn trust with the organization. And I think that he's kind of, like, blossoming. He's, he's naturally an introvert. So, um, you know, it's tough. I think you have a lot of introverts in there as far as, like, good hitters, guys who have, have really, like – stuck with it and I just like chip on their shoulder types. They're the anti Phillies basically with all yeah, their yeah, uh, I mean, I'm tr- big time like, personalities. I need I'm, a Bryce Harper for a fifth or sixth of the price. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of, of a, of a guy that obviously isn't a superstar like Bryce Harper. Um, I mean like a who, Cattell Marte. I don't know. Uh, I mean, he he's going to cost a boatload of money. I, he's been fantastic, especially in the postseason. Um, I'll, I'll I, kind I think of the, think of that. While you're thinking about that, I think the point is well taken. Again, uh, I've been harping on this in injuries and off the field issues or circumstances. You had five position player rookies on the uh, postseason squad that, and we're not talking about rookies that were getting you know, 140, 150 games to their belt. Like Jonathan Aranda, for example, played 34 games this regular season. How many did Cam and Arrow play? How many did Curtis Mead play? Um, how many did Pinto play? That's a lot of young guys to throw into the equation like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. True. And, 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 and they did it uh, partly by necessity. Um, I don't, I don't think that they planned on having, first off, they definitely, I don't think they, on- they expected at the beginning of the season that Oslaves Basabe would be part of the postseason roster. Nope. Yes, uh, uh, Basabe, Junior Caminero. I don't think they. I think they would have laughed in my face if I said, "Are you going to bring Junior Caminero up at this season?" Like I think they would have laughed in my face. Um, Taj Bradley was never supposed to come up as soon as he did. I think he would have came up in like July, August, at some point, kind of in that Shane Boz, Shane McClanahan sort of, um, you know, ilk. Of, of how they've kind of done it in the past, but they were forced to bring him up. He, he went through some highs, went through some lows. I think he'll be better because of it. Um, Rymel Tapia was a, I mean, you know, Tapia, I mean, pickup up or whatever. Yeah. I mean, like, look at, I mean, they, they really, I mean, Brandon Lau fouls a ball off his damn knee and I, you know, Lau was playing so much better, but hard for me to say that he's a game changer when his postseason stats are what they are. Right. I mean, like, you know, I would love to say that the way that he looked would have translated to two games and would, and certainly would have helped out their lineup. It would have. He, he is a difference maker. Just, you know, until you do it, I can't say you're anything other than what your history tells me, right? And he's like a one, what, a one, like 15 hitter or something like that. Um, and and I, I don't know if I have that exactly correct, but I, I, I'm not far. I'm not exaggerating. And that's that's the sad part. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, they, they, um, it's man, we pro- we need another podcast to talk about where the the Rays go, uh, where the Rays go from here. Because if you have time, it, we might as well stick around and plop this into two episodes. Yeah, sure, if you want. 
Yeah, let's, let's do continue it. it.